so I'm just checking out Chiduk. I don't know if it's Chiduk or Chidiok. I mentioned it in the last podcast. It's not C H I D E O C K, but probably Chiduk. I hope. And I'm just walking down the river, Winifred, I think this Winifred, Winifred, I think Winifred. Lots of Winfrith and Winifred. Probably a local saint. Or deity, you never know. I have to say the Chiduk is very beautiful. Lots of thatched cottages. Amazingly beautiful in places. You know, some sort of modern ones. The only thing, of course, especially at this time, and it's train strike day, big road through it, not, not always pavements, and masses of traffic. Um, but I found that, yes... There is a better route down to the... Oh, birdies, hello birdies. I'm walking through the fields down the footpath. That's one way of getting to the campsite. This is a George Inn. So if you ever want to go to Golden Cap Holiday Park, good advice if you're walking. Get off at George Inn and take the footpath. The footpath, mm, sort of... Ooh, uh, sort of... Mm, about 100... Maybe 50 metres, 100 metres. You know, just up the road from there and that will take you to little bit the big berries campsite directly all good and mill lane do not take the take google's advice and get on the seaton road <laughs> the road to sea town i say seaton it's probably seaton but sea town the beach because that's just full of i saw a, a lorry going up there today <laughs> And closely followed by a massive caravan. It was just like tiny road, lots of people, lots of cars. It's not fun to walk down. And also it's steep. Whereas we're gonna see I'm just I'm trialing each one. The middle lane is lovely and quiet. Um and then you've got the which takes you to the edge of the the camp on that side. So you can get to big berries that way. Although as I'm not sure about driving, and you probably need to go to reception if you're driving in but uh i don't care about what drivers do this is a pedestrian pro walking podcast uh sorry but the no but not sorry actually uh but yeah the it looks like the footpath is possibly the best bet because this is supposedly comes out right by where i've pitched my tent so that's probably the best way to exit i booked in for three days so i'm here until uh sunday it's a bit confusing about about days and stuff, so I'm pretty sure it's I booked I booked Saturday night. I hope so, because it gets getting quite busy at Saturday night. I'm guessing this might be famous last words, as I always say. I'm guessing it's going to be uh, quieter on a Sunday night. Less people can be staying around on a Sunday night because though some people leave on a Monday, most people leave on Sunday, so it should be should be easier. It's it's always the Friday and Saturday nights that are the are the painful ones and I think are probably looking on very booking things ooh AMSR gate AMSR um looking at the various booking things you uh, a lot of them are booked up over the bank holiday weekend and that was part of the problem I assume it's this way uh, no the classic open field but Looks like there's a path through it. But yeah, the, you know, my bank holiday, I probably have to come back on the bank holiday. Because unless you've booked stuff, and I don't want another California farm. Um, what I did last time is I stayed at California farm in Swanage. Do not ever stay at the California farm. <laughs> unless you are completely desperate. And in my case, I should have fucking just wild camped, I have to say. It would have been nicer and more interesting. And that's what I might do. I might find somewhere to wild camp for a couple of days. It'd be shame to sort of cut it short, but I, you know, I started on the what was it eleventh, so a couple of weeks is fine. I'd, I would be happy with two weeks, but it, you know, it depends. And also, I will try a few of the places and see if there's anywhere. If not, I'll take a view on the weather and you know what I want to do. 
But that, that was part of the reason why I was rushing to get down here because I was like, you know, that, that long holiday and the train strikes are sort of a hard, you know, to get down there before the train strikes. Then we have to, you know, we have to, uh, you know, we might have to cut it short by the bank holiday weekend because everywhere gets booked out just for that weekend. Not before, not after, just for that weekend. And, uh, but who knows, we might find somewhere where we can slip into who uh, off now. So yeah, today, fairly easy day. I am going to go up to Golden Cap, as I promised. Uh, but I'm going to go heading, I've just been up to check the shopping. Check, check the shopping in Chiduk, which is one shop, spa. Uh, it's sort of a bigger version of the spa that's at Seaton. So it's, you know, there isn't much there. There is actually a farm shop up the road, but it's a mile walk up the road. And I, I had a feeling that probably the lovely pavements would probably run out. And with all those masses of cars, I didn't really fancy it. I might check that out at some point. You know, you never know with those farm shop places. It's, the reviews is, oh, everything you possibly need. And you, you find out and it's all kind of like crystals and... Cinnamon potpourris or whatever, you know, it's, it's 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 never it's never all the shit I need anyway. So yeah, I'm 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 doing the washing today that I couldn't get done at Uli's. I'm sorry. Even when I left, the sign was still up, no washing for cust- you know, no customer washing. It's like why ha- offer a laundry and then never have it available? It's just crazy. So um, they've got machines here, so. I'm doing that. My solar power is currently charging my little battery because my big battery is a bit, a bit weird. And uh, I have to stop here and I'll probably stop this podcast here while I work out which of these paths. There's multiple paths. One looks like the sign, no footpath, right of way across bridge. Okay, I got no idea. I think it's this one, but we'll check in a second. But yeah, um, so yeah, I'm going to go up to. I'm going to have my breakfast, do my washing. Hopefully, should have finished by now. Hopefully, no one's nicked my clothes. Um, and I've done done a bit of shopping. Did you have gluten free food here? If, if that's a problem for you, um, on both, which is brilliant. I love that. I love that. I wish more places. One little places would have little stocks of. I found my favourite brioche rolls. They went down a storm last time, and I've only ever seen them in Spa or occasionally Asda. Shah brioche, sweet brioche rolls, and I got some sausages, and I'm going to go and get some ice. And uh, at the shop, and and do my usual thing of of trying to cook, keep those cool until tonight. Uh, in the in the cool bag, I could put the cool bag in the freezer, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, I don't want it frozen because <laughs> they have uh, at the campsite they have a fridge for a freezer for not fridge, they have a freezer for f- uh, food, uh, not food uh, for ice packs, and so I'm gonna put some ice in there, and so that makes it a bit more cheaper because before I was buying the ice bags and then basically just using the rest of the ice bag to sort of chill down the the cool bag for a bit but you know it didn't last last maybe a day possibly so yeah it was a bit yeah. whereas this way I can actually buy a bag of ice and then just use bits that I want and just chuck them into the you know into my various receptacles and then store store the ice that's brilliant so yes so I'm sure I will talk to you all I suspect there's only one person listening to this hello Angus um, <laughs> but hello if anyone else is listening to this wrong rambling long Tim's long rambles in the countryside which I try and keep them as short as possible they have been going 20 30 minutes recently so you know but the big stuff has been happening well for me anyway and yes so I'll probably speak to you on golden cap or shortly after I finally left the campsite at lunchtime. It was, there's just lots of things I had to do, like uh, wash the clothes. I tried to get washed at Yuli's farm, but they're 
things never did. And, you know, food shopping, went to Chidiok, or Chiduk, whatever it's called, and all that sort of stuff. But, yes, yeah, so I said I'd talk to you from Golden Cap. I'm about halfway up Golden Cap. It's, my feet hurt. Um, but in a weird way, it's a lot more genteel than the the bits around Lulworth and Dirtledor because there are these benches halfway up, <laughs> which is like, my God, there's nothing like that. And the places I I was I was walking, uh, you know, sort of on on Tuesday and and last week. So yeah. And the steps is in parts and stuff like that. So it's kind of a mixture of the sort of the, the big steps from up to Dirtledore and and um, the, the wildness of uh, Moot Bay or parts of Lulworth. And yeah, it you know it's it's uh, I, I was getting really antsy. I can actually see the campsite from here you know it's just like when am I going to leave when am I going to leave it was like every, those things I like, will get some ice you know for the cool bag you know and the, and the sausages I got because I got some brioche with the brioche I got some was it pork ginger beer and marmalade sausages that's really bizarre but they sounded really interesting so I got them but I was worried that they would spoil by the time I get back because although it's not a heat wave it's still quite warm <laughs> As I'm finding walking up this hill, a very big hill. Well, the thing about the Golden Cap is people talk about is that it's actually the highest place, certainly in the south coast, I think. Along, I think it's the highest place of the south coast. Um, I don't know, obviously, it's not, I don't think it's the highest you know, places in Scotland, or whatever, uh, probably have higher cliffs and things, but it's, it is the highest place in the south coast. So it has that notoriety. Well, obviously, lots of people come, so hence they have things like benches. And by the way, this is the Mullins for Lid bench. I think that's what I'm saying. It. Mullins for Lid. Uh, that's what it has scratched into it. So I'm at the Mullins for Lid base camp. Although it's not base camp because it's the second one. So it's, what's this? Base camp 2? Camp 2? I don't know. Camp 1? Camp 2? So base camp would be the campsite. So I suppose this, you know, this, is, probably, this is probably base camp 2 or, well, camp, you know, 2 or whatever. But yeah... Uh, I will continue in a bit. It's just it's very nice looking at over to I think it's Thorncombe Beacon and the beach, looking rather golden for something who's actually a bunch of pebbles. And yeah, it's, it's amazing the erosion around here. You can I took pictures of a fence just hanging over the the precipice. It's just hanging there in mid air, and uh, I didn't get too close. And there are frequent landslides here. Well, you can see them on the beach. Um, but apparently that's a good time when there's been storms or landslips to find fossils, because this area is very well known for uh, fossils. Um, more... Well, more Bridport, I think, but this area as well. Famous female... Sort of early sort of dinosaur archaeologist and... Fossil collector, I can't remember her name at the moment. Uh, she was, I think, I think she was Bridport. But yes, it's uh, West Bay. But yeah, Bridport. That's all the way. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice to get out and about, and it's nice to get up here and just uh, it it it's alternating between blowing a gale, being all moody. Which was when I was walking, I was like, great, it's moody, it's cold. It might rain. That's perfect walking weather for me. Then, of course, the sun comes out and it's like, Ugh. and then it goes back to being all grumpy again. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm waiting out the uh, warm bit. So I'll speak to you hopefully from the top. Uh, hello from Golden Cap. It's not like it's Everest, okay? Too. Uh, I've been on top of it. On top of your golden cap um, for the last couple of hours because I did a painting from the top and the weather changed so it went from you know the odd breeze sunny to you know the golden cliffs and uh, all of that to 
blowing a gale. It was like Moop all over again. Moop Bay where I stayed. And then it just got windier and windier. I was painting from the trigonometry point at the top, which must be the highest point of Golden Cap. And it's a piece, well, I think I'll probably call it View from Golden Cap. And it's on, I think it's on the cotton paper, Fabri Sunny Fabriano cotton paper. Uh, it's, I use using the uh, Evergood, my trusty, hmm, I say fairly trusty, you have, to, you have to press down slightly on it to get get marks sometimes. But my trusty Evergood um, vintage pen. And yeah, it was probably about, I don't know, about an hour and a half only over an hour it's hard to judge time um and i kept sort of stopping and holding on to it for dear life because I, I i was worried that the work was going to run away <laughs> over a cliff uh, as well as also the um the watercolors and almost a little watercolor sponge i tried to escape and all of my stuff so yeah someone wanted to take a picture of me holding it in front of the view and i was like no chance <laughs> sorry <laughs> not in this wind so yes that's a a good work to be done i'm going to walk now walk to charmus apparently allegedly there's a bus at seven just before eight o'clock we'll find out if that exists or not uh i'm sure there's probably a more up, less uppy downy way back if not but uh, uh yeah or even walk across the road i've got my trekking poles i can really piss off the uh the drivers so but yeah i think from now on it's a bit less uppy really all the way around to charmouth and then i can actually see lime regis in the distance i know that's quite flat from you know there a bit but i don't recognize any of this so I'm not exactly sure why I was in Lyme Regis and maybe I was walking the other way. I'm not really sure why I never did Golden Cap because I don't recognise any of this. Maybe I'll see something and go, oh, I, rec I, oh, I recognise this now. But no, I don't recognise any of this. So this is all new to me. Good. But yeah, it's nice to sort of break new ground on these things. So I'll speak to you later. I'm waiting for the last few sausages to cook. Today's been a weird kind of day. After I spoke to you, I went down from Golden... Well, I went down from Golden Cap, and then the heavens opened. It just... Uh, it's amazing how quickly it changed from being all sunny to just misty. A bit like Dirtle Door. Uh, the weather is highly changeable at Golden Cap. You know, and I'm not unprepared, but even so, I decided to walk to Charmouth, and it was just blowing a gale and blowing rain in my face. It was just like, oh dear. And also, I did get some prior warning from someone who I spoke to on the way up at Golden Caps. I said, oh, it's you know, it's it's easy from here, and I said, oh, you do have to go up to the edge of. Stone Barrow. I was like, Stone Barrow? And then I got to Stone Barrow Hill and I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> it's not as bad as Golden Cap, but after you've done Golden Cap and you've come down from that, and, and I went to St Gabriel's Chapel, which is really nice, and I'm, if it wasn't blowing a gale and raining, I would have uh, drawn or painted that area because I think it's beautiful. It's um. I'm not really a spiritualist. Well, more, I'm, I'm an atheist, but sometimes you can understand when you see spaces like that why people put them there and why people worship there. There's just something there, and yeah, sadly, it's a ruined chapel, but it's there is a real beauty there, uh, even even what's left. And yeah, so that sort of delayed me a bit. And then the heavens opened as I went from there. I kind of got lost, so I ended up going up the wrong track, and I was actually ended up going away from the coast for a while. I had to go double back. And then I was worried about the bus even existing, because one site said it existed, and then I looked at X-51, and it was like, oh, it's not there. But it turns out it's the X-53, 
and so it does exist but I got the earlier one there's a scamper to try and get the early one and I realised that as I had got to the top of Stone Barrow Hill which is not as tall as Golden Cap but after you've done Golden Cap you're like you're a bit exhausted and suddenly you hit by this a couple of miles later you or a mile or so later you're hit by this other hill which is just just too much and so yeah be warned about that Charmouth look, itself looks interesting much more much more kind of stuff there than I thought I thought it'd be a village it's more like a town it's more like almost well, kind of like a suburb of Lyme Ridge, Lyme Ridge actually looks like but it, it's much more urbanised than I thought it would be but I didn't get a chance to look at the Charmouth itself or you know the actual um, bay and the river and that kind of stuff because I was I had to just run for a bus because I wanted to get back here before 8 and it's good I did because I'm, I'm now cooking it's 8.40 and I'm cooking sausages and you know it's starting to go dark but also it's been blowing a gale so I'm worried about the tent so I've been sort of trying to shear up the tent I'm going to turn this off now I think it's probably done they're probably done uh, yeah I did my version of a barbecue I don't know how much I've wrecked that pan I have a kind of a griddle it's supposed to be a smoking a fish smoking pan I think I found it in a Chinese um, a Chinese uh, shop and it, 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 it's like a little sort of smoking griddle thing and, and it has a detachable griddle thing which is good for toast and it has the main thing you can use with sausages but I found that today the bigger sausages which are of all things ginger beer and marmalade how bare is that <laughs> I'm eating pork ginger beer and marmalade so <laughs> just call me Paddington yeah so um, it works better with just the, just the bottom bit but it's probably making a bit of a mess I don't really care because this canister is supposedly near finishing although I can't believe this can this large canister of camping gas which I've had for nearly two de decades I've been sitting there and I've done several big meals with it thinking it's going to run out it's going to run out it's going to run out it just hasn't and it's crazy I think it's you know it's, I, obviously I, it was mostly full I, and it just sat there so you know I'm, I'm using it but yeah I'm a bit pissed off about uh, I bought some I've invented the brandy Xander the gay or queer version of Brandy Alexander, which is rosé prosecco on brandy. Unfortunately, I put I propped the bottle against the tent, so either the wind or me knocked over the bottle, so I lost some of the prosecco. So now it's kind of mostly brandy, and I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> getting completely shit faced. <laughs> It's yeah. I got very wet, cold, and my feet really fucking hurt. And um, I even I'll probably leave it behind. But I even got this folding bowl just so I could put my feet in hot water. Because one of the problems with these things is you get hot showers. Great. But what you really need uh, if you're walking is actually somewhere to soak your feet. The problem being is. You know, um, I don't usually do that because, you know, you need to carry a bowl. And, you know, who carries a bowl with them? But, you know, i got this folding thing and I'll probably leave it behind. It's just a bit wasteful, but some, maybe someone else will be able to use it. But I was just like, oh, screw it. I really, really, really want to soak my feet. I think they will, they will, they will help because they were really hurting. Um, on the, especially waiting for the bus. Of course, there was no seats. It was, of course, the bus shelter has no seats. So yeah, big success in walking two big Jurassic Coast cliffy things in one day. One surprise uh, in the middle of a fucking rainstorm. Part of it. And doing a, a watercolour as well. I would have done more. I'd say I would have drawn that chapel. I would have painted the chapel. If it wasn't for this, this just 
it, you know, it wasn't really bad rain. I mean, I only had my packer mac on for some of it, but enough to just be like, no, I can't, I can't work in this. I've tried, <laughs> I've tried. I've got the um, very strange results to prove it. Um, so yeah, I will see how my feet are tomorrow, and I'll probably. If they are fucked, I will do a bus day and go to Abbotsbury and Bridport. And I've got a bit of food locally, but I might, you know, might might do. They've got a waitrose in Bridport. Um, oh yes, oh, oh they're posh. Um, I saw that on the bus. And I was like, oh, waitrose. Oh, how middle class am I? I'm not. I'm working class, but. Yeah, Waitrose is an oasis of gluten-free f- food and things that... You know, the spa shops are quite good, actually. The local spa shop here has gluten-free pasta, gluten-free pizza bases, and a char... What I'm eating the, um, the sausages with, which is the the char brioche rolls, which I love. So that's good. Uh, no, on the downside, no non non milk milk so no alm- almond or oat milk I know that's a bit fucking trendy but they just don't go off as quickly but what I'm doing is I'm trying UHT for the first time I had some bad experiences with UHT with those little you know those little coffee I used to have those a store of those little coffee you know I didn't we didn't have a fridge and so I had a store of the little, the little coffee creamer things they go off. They do seriously go off, and they seriously go off before the date. <laughs> you might think, "Oh, there's plastic milk." They go on for no. And so, it, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit wary of UHT because it's like it's great to store it for for a long time as long as you don't open it. As soon as you open it, then the clock is ticking, and it's just like any other milk. So, yeah, I'm not really sure if it's going to be any better, but we'll see. It's a small amount. So it'd be nice to have something that was closer to milk in my in my um in my cereal and coffee. Because I'm not a big fan of oat milk. I just I started drinking it because not at home but just on these strips because it's just easier to store. Uh it doesn't go off as quickly. So anyway. This is gonna be a fucking long podcast, sorry about that. Um Weirdly, the wind has dropped. I hope that stays. Um, and it's going dark, and I have some sausages to eat. So I will speak to you soon. And yes, I hope you enjoy the artwork, which should be in the little episode artwork of this thing, which is a new piece, which I think I'm quite proud of. But it's been an hour and a half, I think, maybe two hours, I think an hour and a half, um, on top of a very windy golden cap i'm amazed it got done at all given the fact the golden cap is not unknown for being very mercur- mercurial i've had too much brandy to say that word um with its weather so i managed to get a slot where it wasn't a nightmare but i'd forgotten how weird the weather is at golden cap well i've never been there but i've heard stories of it so yeah, um, I'm proud to have I've done that little, you know, managed to get a little window of doing that. And uh, the thing is, everyone else works on fucking photographs, and I'm, I'm just like, why? I said to someone, the person who told me about the Stone Barrier Hill, or his, or his I assume daughter, but I don't know, but I suppose this bloke, older bloke, I said, why do I do this? <laughs> why? Why do I do this? Why do I put myself through this? Yeah, everyone else works on a bloody photograph. Um, well, a lot of the watercolour artists you see out there, they, they work from photographs. They don't do plain air at all. They don't do real... Pl- the reason why I get besieged by people going, oh, what are you doing? It's because artists are not going out there into the into the field, literal field. And I feel a responsibility to do that. And it is annoying that my other artists aren't fucking stepping up, you know? Because I feel like we should be out there working. But 
that if you work from a photograph, you've got the limitation of the camera and you've got the all of the you know the lens distortion. I can fucking tell. I can tell. If you work from a photograph, I can tell. I'm a, I was a photographer long enough to know that were all the tells of a photograph and so many things have those tells and it's just like seriously if you're gonna work from photograph at least learn photography and learn what to take out all the, all the distortions and the color fringing and all that sort of stuff don't just do okay what's there because that's just stupid but so many people do that you know, they take a photograph and then they work from the photograph. And it's just like, why? Just show the photograph. Just print the photograph. Just print it on some nice paper and then just put the photograph there. Why do... Why go, oh, look, I've turned it into watercolour. Well, that will whoop de fucking do <laughs> Sorry, I had too much brandy. But, yeah, you know, I'm... You know, I might be weirdly hardcore about my extreme watercolour, but... I feel very strongly about this that artists, if they're working, should be working from nature, should always be working from nature, least their own stretch sketches, never from a photograph. I'm very traditional about this um, because you just don't get the. To, you don't get the collapse of collapse of time because <clears throat> what's amazing about a decent photograph? I'm sorry. Um, what's good? Well, a photograph is just a very small fraction of time. What's a great about a decent painting, a plein air painting or drawing, is it's actually a composite of time. Because as you light like was happening at Golden Cap today. The light was changing, and so I was adjusting for that. And I'm, I'm trying to think, well, should I keep that bit, or should I change that bit? Oh, the clouds have moved. Should I keep the old clouds, whatever? You know, and there's those decisions all the time about how you treat, you know. Oh, there's some people have arrived. Oh, a bird has arrived, or an animal has arrived. Or, you know, should you include them, should you not? And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I quite often include birds in my photos. And every time I include our birds, it's not like... Um, Bob Ross, it's not happy little trees. I'm not inventing them. That bird was there. It might have stayed there, but it was there. And that's the point. That's the composite and the collapsing of time. So there's two hours of, of your life in that work that is collapsed into that scene. And I don't think people get that. I really think that people do not get that uh, about my work is that it's not, oh, look, Tip has duplicated something in front of him that like, a camera could do in, in the 30th of a second. No, I've done something that a camera can never do, which is basically take three hours or two hours of time or one hour, one and a half of time, and then put in all your emotions and your feelings and, and everything in there um, in one picture. And I think that's pretty fucking amazing. And I I just kind of get a bit knocked down hard sometimes because I'm just like, people just don't get it. That to do that is a load of sequence of choices and it's not just, oh, click. Oh, you know, oh. I saw, I saw so many people today get to the top of Golden Cab, take a picture and just fuck off. Or might stay there for about a few minutes and then go away. It's different if you stand there and you're in the triangulation point painting a work and drawing and thinking, oh, why am I fucking doing this? I'm getting attacked by wind. I'm wondering if all your work is going to basically be blown away into the channel. Um, I can't really channel here, is it? But the sea. And, yeah, I don't think people consume in that way anymore. And I think that's sad. I think people should... You know, this whole thing about slow food, I think there's a, it should be a movement of slow art. Because I think people have got so used to consuming visual media at speed and as a sort of instant like that, you know, that they've lost that ability to stop and think 
and work on something for you know half an hour or a day or 50 minutes or three days or whatever you know for a longer time than that than a 30th or a 50th or a 100th of a second and that's why i was talking about the unrecorded moment and that's why i was talking about the whole point about you know if you're going to record a moment make it fucking last make it actually something that takes a t- you know takes a decent time to do or don't bother or you know or, or just leave it because if you're going to try and capture the world in little clicks like that um one you'll miss the moment all the time because by the time you've done it the, the thing the child the animal whatever is fucked off moved out of the way it's it's gone the moment has gone but if you sit there and enjoy all the moments and then collapse them into one thing, that becomes like a hyper-reality. Well, I think it's a bat. Um, there's a hyper-reality there which you can't get from a photograph. And that's the reason why, yes, there's bats. Excellent, there's bats here. Um, that's the kind of thing you just cannot get from a photograph. People go, oh, photographs or AI, or even AI or any of those things. Oh, will they replace? No, they won't. For that very reason, because you're just making, you're you're becoming a kind of a time lord in a way. You're kind of collapsing all these moments of time into one thing and deciding, making all those decisions. And computers can't do that. AI can't do that. AI could do some of it, but it has to base it off something that's already existing. It can't create something completely new. I can create something in... I can draw something that AI would never draw in about five minutes. So, you know, this idea, oh, are you worried about photography? No, because it just doesn't, it's dumb. Photography is dumb in a way. It could be very highly creative, but it's also very stupid. And the same with AI, it doesn't really know what it sees. And it certainly doesn't know that, oh, look, 50 minutes in, a blackbird arrived, or a raven arrived, or someone came along and talked to you about your artwork, or someone, you know, popped up and said your tent was at the wrong angle. That happened yesterday. Um, pff, yeah, someone's having a go, how can you sleep in your tent like that? And I was, like, looking at other tents at the same angle, thinking, why are you even having a go at them? Very strange. Anyway, it's 20 minutes, I better stop this. This is going to be a very long podcast. Tim rants at dark while bats sweep soup for their sausages. Uh, and he drinks brandy Zander. Podcast. Yes. I better stop here. <laughs>